these are mistakes I learned and I don't do them anymore. So I'm sharing with you what nobody taught me. Jacob Gilliam, Master Tech here. Let me show you why you need a uh, clamp amp meter that measures uh, milliamperage, especially on solar systems when you're trying to chase down uh, power draw. You're drawing down your battery system and everything seems to be in order. It's important to be able to, to basically trace down the amperage use, and that's where a clamp amp meter comes in handy. Let me show you what I got set up here already. So here's my clamp amp meter, okay? I can't live without this thing. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is disconnect anything that's uh, drawing power. In this situation, I have a safety beam, and I have a LiftMaster radio receiver, and then you have the main power for the entire system. So let me show you what I'm looking at then. I'm gonna watch this meter while I try various things and I'll verbally walk you through it. Clamp onto your battery lead, one battery lead, and it really doesn't matter which lead. That you I like to use the positive lead because I don't like to get a negative amperage reading, but technically it doesn't matter a whole lot. You gotta zero it out, okay? Now, again, everything's powered down. I'm gonna plug in the main circuit board On boot up, this is normal. I'm used to seeing about 250 milliamps. Then it should drop back down to about 110 to 130 milliamps. Okay, here it comes down. Now, it didn't come down as much as I expected. That's the first, the first sign to me that maybe there's something wrong. But, don't always trust your meter. So you wanna do it again and see if you get the same result. Just go ahead and disconnect that power source see if it drops back down to zero or approximately zero. See, it didn't drop back down to zero. So that's uh, also another important step that I forgot to point out here. So when I first do an initial power up, I make sure that my meter is reading things correctly by zeroing first, plugging in the power source, let it come up to any stable number, then unplug it from the power source, see if it goes back to zero. See, it did not go back to zero, and that's not always the case. However, we do know that's fairly close. That's very minimal, but I'm too picky for that. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna zero it out. I'm gonna plug it back in. Two hundred twenty-five, two hundred twenty-two. I'm gonna power it down. See if we go back to zero. There we go. Now I'm okay with that. It didn't exactly go back to zero, but you know, 15 one hundredths, uh, I mean one thousandths is not a major issue to me. 13. Okay, so I'm gonna plug that back in again. I'm gonna leave everything alone. Plug it back in. Now, after boot up, I should see this board stabilized to about 120, like I said, 130 milliamps. Basically, after it's uh, scanned all its blue bus devices and things like that, uh, there we go. So we got 104, and that's actually pretty good. Like the the screen on this board is stable. I know it's not processing anything. Now, after 30 seconds, this is also supposed to now. I know that the nice high security 1050 board should drop drop down to about 10 milliamps. Okay. Um, whenever it goes into standby or sleep mode or solar mode. So whenever the standby kicks on here in a second and that screen goes dark, okay, just went dark, this should drop down to approximately 10 milliamps, all right? And it did, okay, it's 15, but we know that we're not exactly perfect. So we know it's within its threshold. So we know the board's not issue, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start plugging in one accessory at a time to draw off the battery system to see what this number gives me. So now I'm gonna wake up the circuit board to where it powers up the safety beam, see what this climbs to. Almost 400 milliamps. 355, and I know 120-ish, 110 of that is the main board, right? So here we go, that's what I was expecting. Okay, 287. So now I know that the board at full power is about 110 and the safety means pulling about 170 right and it just powered it down though see that um 
So 150 to 200 milliamps is a, about the amperage rating I would expect for the type of safety beam that's out here. And you can check the specs on the safety beam or various accessories, whatever the accessory is. You can check the specs uh, typically in the manual. If not, you can call the manufacturer. So I'm going to unplug that safety beam again. It shouldn't affect the amperage. There we go. Now I'm going to plug and power up this LiftMaster radio receiver. Here, I'm going to plug that in to the board now and see what kind of power it draws. And I know that these radio receivers typically draw about, I don't know, 30 to 40 milliamps in standby. So let's plug that in. And oh, wow. No, that's not. I think we just found the cause of the premature drain of all these batteries out here. Yeah, this is way too much amperage for a safety, for a radio receiver standby. Let me unplug that again. So when I unplug the radio receiver, yeah, it drops down quite a bit. I already know, I already know that radio receiver is bad because if you check the specs on this LiftMaster radio receiver, I, I promise you. It's uh, nowhere near that high. And of course, uh, this is a 12 watt system, so you have to make sure you're checking your amperage specs um, based off the voltage supplied to the device. The point that I'm making by that is the same device does not pull the same amount of amperage with different voltages. Meaning, um, if you increase the voltage supply to a device, it requires less amperage to do the same job. If you decrease the voltage to a device, it requires more amperage to do the same job. So the amperage draw is inversely proportional to the applied voltage. Raise the voltage, the amperage requirements go down. Lower the voltage, and the amperage requirements increase to do the same job. A radio receiver that has 12 volts applied to it is going to pull more power than a radio the same res receiver that has 24 volts applied to it. And I know this is a 12 volt system and LiftMasters come out of the box set up for 24 volt, but then you can change them to 12 volt. And so I need to verify what its specs are for amperage requirement at 12 volts. I guess I took the long way around the barn there, but I, uh, I wanted to lay a little technology on you. Okay, in here. I'm ver I've verified that this radio receiver was set up for a 12 volt system, not a 24 volt, and it and it's correct. I already know that's extremely excessive amperage draw for a LiftMaster radio receiver, so I'm going to wire in a different one and uh, see if I get a different result. All right, so uh, I did have a LiftMaster new LiftMaster radio receiver on the bus. That's the same model and everything. So let's see what the manual says here. Let's see what the engineers tell us. The engineers tell us, there we go. So, hopefully y'all can see that on the camera. The engineers tell us at 18 to 30 volts DC, it's approximate power draw is 30 milliamps, okay? I knew I was pretty close on that. Our meter is showing that the existing LiftMaster receiver is pulling 170 milliamps. That's an absurd amount of standby power draw for any radio receiver. That's definitely a big red flag. So let's replace this uh, radio receiver. Our clamp amp meter is still connected to the battery. So we're gonna leave it that way. So this is the nice 1050 board on its own in standby or solar sleep mode, right? Uh, I'm just going to pause the video while I rewire the new receiver and then into the place of the old receiver, and then I'll come right back. All right, now we have the new radio receiver wired up in place. The board's amperage draw has actually decreased a little bit while I was doing that, but that's minor. Now we're going to plug in the new radio receiver and what, see what the amperage draw pops up to. Wow, minimal. Not even 20 milliamps. Let's power it back down. Plug the new receiver back in again. So we were definitely dealing with a bad radio receiver out here. Now, raise your hands. Uh, who would have taken the battery out of this unit and uh, hauled it off to get tested? Um, back in the day, I would have done that too. <laughs> 
This is where a clamp amp meter is invaluable. You save time and you're a professional. Hey, everybody likes to be a professional, but you save a lot of time. You waste so less money running batteries back and forth because you, or just swapping them out too. Uh, I've seen people warranty swap out, and let me, let me rephrase that, I've even warranty swapped out batteries that whenever I got it back to the shop, I couldn't find anything wrong with them and I ended up using them for something else, you know? So even I'm guilty of that. But of course, I've been doing this for a long time. These are mistakes I learned and I don't do them anymore. So I'm sharing with you what nobody taught me, okay? So, uh, if you don't have a clamp amp meter that will measure milliamps, along with your regular multimeter and your mega meter, you're really dropping the ball, not just on the customer, but you're dropping the ball on you. You're making your life exponentially harder than it needs to be. So stop doing that. And if you don't want to miss another one of my videos, don't forget to ring that bell.